of Australia's top chefs has criticised the federal government's three-stage approach to reopening pubs, clubs and restaurants. Luke Mangan says the 10-person rule is not worth some venues opening their doors. He spoke to my Sky News colleague Tim Gilbert earlier this week. So Luke, this restaurant glass, usually one of the most vibrant restaurants, not only in Sydney but in Australia, just had your 15th anniversary. Mm. It's eerie, it's, it's quite sad. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, um, we see 240 covers and we've got a wine bar next door. And, you know, it's, uh, I guess it's like everyone in the business. They're, they've had to close and we are where we are, but I look forward to opening when, when that time comes. You're a chef, but you're an entrepreneur. You're always trying something new and everything was sailing quite nicely. You were in the cruise ships and restaurants. Mm. And if there's two things that got absolutely smashed, well, if you, if you think about it, we had uh, airlines, cruise ships, restaurants, hotels, and food on trains. And I, never did I think that uh, all would, would go under um, or stop in one spot. But uh, they have, and we are, we, you know, we are where we are, and we're just uh, looking forward to trying to restart again. And, and you know what? A lot won't restart because of uh, funds and, and, and financial costs and things like that. So that's a worry as well. So you look at a restaurant like this, look, let's look at what's happening now. There is a brightness to look at because, you know, well, things are starting to open up again. But a restaurant, as you say, 240 covers and a wine bar, 10 people. You, you cannot open a place like this. No. Was it thought through? Did the government think through what they were doing? Because a bolt hole where you grew up in Melbourne, sure, you're probably yep. capacity yep. in 10. That's right. A little cafe, something like that. Now, we could, and we have space to do this. You can see how we've spaced the tables out that when we do get to that stage, and it's looking like stage three, that you might be able to have 100 people in. But as you said, rightly said, we can't open with 10 people. We've got to, to flick the lights on here is expensive, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. And, and to bring the staff back and, and supplies and things like that. So sadly, we won't be doing it here. Our, our operation in Dank Street, Waterloo, where I've control a little bit more costs there, we can do it and we're gonna do a little, a, a 10 seat table, uh, social you know, distance with a degustation menu, set price, they have to book beforehand and things like that. Have the government got this wrong? I think so. I think so. Because why couldn't we, as, as having me, two 1,000 square metre restaurants, be able to open maybe, have three tables of ten, four tables of ten, or five tables of ten? Um, and we could have turned them over, possibly. Um, I think that's, it's a strange one. Some cafes will do it well. I know a lot of the restaurant business are not going to even bother opening because I think when they do, um, all these added costs and added pressure will come back and bite. And, and I think the smart ones will stay closed until we can open properly. How will you do it? How do you reckon you'll start injecting back? So, you know, Dank Street, you'll open... Uh, and Friday, so two nights a week, because yeah. that's all we can afford mm. to. We can't bring everyone back in, in for a five, seven night operation. Here, we're just going to wait till the third stage, I think, and, and if that's 100 covers. Um, and just do it slowly. Uh, it's going to be like a slow burn, like we closed, like they closed us down. And I get why they did it all, and, and you know it's being responsible, and we're, we're working with them. But we want to employ people. We want to get back into it, and I think now is a good time to do it. So, Luke, a uh, couple of years ago, when you were 15 years, that's where you started in the kitchen. <laughs> that's Normally, it. if this was buzzing, that'd be full. Yeah, we have about 20 chefs in there. And obviously now we're going to look at how we do that, uh, separate the team members. But um, again, when we do open, it's going to be a slow burn. So we'll be bringing less staff in to initially to start. And, and yeah, and some of these guys are on apprenticeships and starting out in their careers. So yeah. it's a difficult one, isn't it? It is. And, and you know, we've kept kept them kept in touch with them all and, and and keeping them motivated as well and it's been hard for them as well no income no things like that so it's it's a tricky one yeah all right now, now moving on to to how you've got to be agile nimble obviously beautiful creativity in this painting and i'm not saying that uh you or i have the ability to do that but what we've all had to be at times like this is agile nimble mm. able to move you've you've done some things like you know home packs mother's day pushed your social media. Tell us about what you've done. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been lucky. And I, you know, I think when they, the government brought back JobKeeper, it enabled us to do some other things. Uh, and that's 
cooking at home, you know, we did some things for Coles, we did some commercials for them, which was great, uh, and we all filmed at home on an uh, iPhone, etc. As you said, the Mother's Day hampers, we're doing takeout food now from Luke's Kitchen, um, and you've just got to think of ways to engage with your audience and be creative and keep your name out there and keep the brand alive um, because it's a long time for that interaction to be gone. And, and doing bits and pieces like that is keeping others employed too, isn't it? hundred percent, and that's, that's the best thing the government did. I mean, look, to help our industry kickstart a bit better, there's a lot of other things they could do for us. I mean, there's fringe benefit tax and there's, you know, uh, payroll tax that we could look at and that would help small businesses get back on track. It would get big companies to come back into restaurants and entertain in restaurants as well. Do you reckon for the next two years, two, three years, I should say, let's ban fringe benefits tax? 100%. Let's ban payroll tax yeah. and that would help? We're, look. At every level? Every level. Yeah, in our business because, you know, Corporates are entertaining in their offices nowadays because it's, it's easier and cheaper for them to do that. Now, if they could come into our restaurants, we employ more staff. We look after more people. And, and that's what we're all after, isn't it? So, Luke, here's an example of how you're going to do it mm. when you get to stage three and, and hopefully have 100 people in here. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. See, it's all spread out correctly. Look at these booths. Uh, what we're going to do is diagonally. You know, one table there, one table there, one table there and one table there. So spread out as it should be. Um, there will be a bit of atmosphere here, which is good, but it won't be certainly like the old days. No, no, not yet anyway. No. And you can only have four on each table. That's right, you? yeah, yeah. And as long as we're very socially distanced, it's uh, important. But we, as I said before, are so lucky mm. to have this large space, we can do it. Um, for smaller restaurants, you know, that, that seat 30 or 40, you're going to have 10 people in them. And that's really hard. And it becomes hard for waiters. They're almost going to have to do tap I dance know. classes well, too. We, we're actually thinking of ways how we can get food to the customer and wine to the t customer without all that touching. And we're actually, I've got a team meeting next week about that. We, we might be bringing food over on trolleys uh, or, or trays and putting it in the middle and things like that. So we're, we're looking into all those little systems. And people pouring their own wine. Exactly right. The, the, certainly the wine will go in the middle of the table nowadays. Yeah. Well, I'd like to be having a glass of wine and a steak with you and shake your hand yes. right now. It would be nice, wouldn't it? We can't really do that. No. But there will be a moment soon where we can. Until next time.